wasn't bad coming to get you. It was real good. Oh, that's good. Oh, <laughs> So, so what you do? You talk, talk to me. Hello, Legit Squad. Missy here, and we're having a legit chat. We're doing this thank you divorce series, and so I have pastors Cheryl and Kelvin here. And next to me. Okay, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Make you feel special. Why? I like feeling special. Yes. And, and I take this here as a young woman. If a man don't treat you special, you're dating the wrong person. Right. And you know, as as you're you're sharing all of that, I mean, I wouldn't want to go through all of that vulnerability with someone I'm not married to anyway, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So because now you can have the veil, you can yeah. remove the veil. Yeah. You can honestly, show up the way that you are. Mm -hmm. They're already your friend. You already know that they have your back. You already know that they're for you. Yeah. You guys are going in the same direction, and so you two will be mirrors of one another. So when I look at Kelvin then I see his weaknesses as well as his strengths. And so I know how to support him and vice versa. He mm -hmm. looks at me and he can see where I need a little support. And so we just right. really come together. Those are the things we learn from our divorce. Like, I need to see you. I need to be with you. I need to support you. We need to really communicate. We need to be honest. We need to be vulnerable. We need to be there for one another. And mm -hmm. so um, that has strengthened us as well as the foundation being the word of God. That's the final answer to everything that we do. And I think communications is the key to everything. Yeah. I mean, honest communication, no mask on, really talking. And even in the things that you're sharing may not be as easy for your spouse to receive, but the honesty of it will help them calculate what they need to do to make things better, mm -hmm. especially with something that on your end where you feel like you're being deprived of being injured by a way of behavior or something. But if I never tell you, then you never can change. Right. And one yeah. of the things that myself, I wasn't the easiest person to get along with. I, was, I grew up in the South and you know, you had your wife here, you had your woman across town, you had your girlfriend over there and that's the way we was taught, period. Mm -hmm. But that couldn't work in my marriage. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't bring that into my marriage and I had to do some deep changing and dying to self to be a man that could be married to this woman for the rest of my life. So I couldn't be me in the area of selfishness. I had to be me in the area of we. And I tell people that in wow. marriage, I said, there's no me, I, or mine in marriage. It's we, us, and ours. Yeah. So what can yeah. make us progress? What can we do to be better? And what can we own together in the area of our marriage and our joy, the things we like, the things we don't like? And the way you spell marriage is called W-O-R-K. <laughs> It's work. Yeah. So if you're not working on your marriage every day, we've married over 20 years now, and we work on our marriage every day. Mm -hmm. If I see something, I know her like the book. She can say, oh, I'm fine. I, I said, no, 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 you're not fine. I saw the way you moved your head. I saw your <laughs> eye when I moved up. What's going on, baby? Yeah. And we talk about it. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't want to say something for fear of hurting your spouse. Mm -hmm. But you got to say something. Mm -hmm. Or you can't never fix nothing. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. You answered a lot of my questions here. So, so that's that's really great. But I I want to pull maybe one thing that you brought from like your old marriage. So like maybe you were looking at marriage now from the lens of your divorce. Like what was one thing, either good or bad, that you brought from like your divorce, being divorced before, as opposed to being married the first time when you guys met each other? I would say mine was my communication skills. Okay. Because in my first marriage, if I felt it, I thought it, I said it. Okay. And I didn't care who was around. Mm -hmm. And so what I learned from that is not what you say, but how you say. And I learned the, a big lesson not to have the conversations in front of my son, but to have them away. So even if I disagree, then he can go ahead and say whatever he's going to say, but then in the back room, then I'll have that private conversation. 
So I just learned to be more vulnerable, but it's when I'm vulnerable, when I'm saying it, how I'm saying it. And that way I can just go ahead and show up for, uh, as, as my true authentic self. Well, you? mine, I, I, I knew my non-negotiables. Okay. I knew my boundaries was very clear. Mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted and I knew what I did not want. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was easier for me to have a checklist, check, 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 check. And one of the things that we did, we, we did a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, we did a lot of talking. We asked a lot of questions and I knew what I was looking for. And when I met Pastor Cheryl, she checked off 80% of my list. Mm -hmm. Not 100, 80% of my list was checked off. The 20, we didn't say 80, 20, you know, if you got 80% of what I, the 20% I can live with, or yeah. the 30% I can live with, yeah. true. Nobody gonna be 100% because you remain a clone yourself and you won't be happy. <laughs> yeah. But, but she had the foundation of the things I wanted in a wife. Her value systems were in place. Her morality was in place. She had no hangups that I knew of. So I'm like, okay, this looks like this work. And I've been talking to God. God cleared it to me. He said, you can say, go to the desert, young man. You'll find her there. So, <laughs> I'm in the desert, Lord, where she at? <laughs> Look, six months later, she showed up. Wow. Yeah. 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 And I went back to the desert, a place I said I would never go because I never thought I was going to find my husband there. Okay. And so it was, again, it was just for me to go ahead and get into alignment with God. And because of me being obedient, because of PK being obedient, we both met at the church again, right? Mm. And we both were able to be honest and show up as two whole people, not too half, not too broken, not too looking, but really two people who are saying, you know what? We know what we want, where we want to go. And we had the, the hard conversations, the real conversations. And this is good here, is one of the things that allowed her to date me was that I was already walking with God. Oh, yes. You oh, see, yes. oh, yes. A lot of people will say, I'm going to start going to church. And you meet that person because they're in church. You think they're all that. But they really, fine. they haven't given up anything for right. God. They haven't been in the any. So they just, you get the Bible, it's brand new, it's wide open, nothing there, no marks, no highlights, <laughs> just out the box kind of thing. But what allowed her to even date me was yeah. that I was already walking with God. And in fact, our first date was that Bible study. In fact, I thought she stood me up. I got there and, and she wasn't there. I'm like, okay, but I'm getting the word. The Bible study was really good, by the way. And then she showed up and she came, a little bit of she was, you know, doing the parenting thing. But we laughed and joked about it. And she said, one of the things that impressed her, when she looked over at me, my Bible was all written into, my notebook was full. It wasn't yeah. like I was just there saying, I'm going to go pick up somebody at church. Yeah. So just by me being who I was with God, allowed her to even open the door for me to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I was going to ask, what was one thing that you saw in Pastor Kelvin that you felt like you could do life with him, you know, forever? That part right that there. Part. What about you? What was one thing? About one thing, I didn't want to have any more kids. Okay. So she, the first question, well, the, the second question was, do you want kids? She says, I could, but not necessarily. Okay. I have a son. I, okay, great. And the other thing was, I asked her, was she a tighter? Oh. And she said, yes, I am. I said, okay, because that's a checkoff for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we... There were two big questions there. Yeah. Then we started talking and she would just slide in questions to me about the Bible. And I was able to flip the scripts open and we were sitting in Denny's. We were sit there for about three or four hours. hours. I think hours. We put us out. After Bible study, we went there. I think there. we put us out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you closed down Denny's, but we did. Because one of the things that I wanted, I didn't want to be the spiritual head. I didn't want to be the head of the house. I wanted my husband to have that role. And I, one of my prayers was, Lord, I want my husband to know more about the Word of God than I do. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to ask him, and I want him to be able to open up the, the Bible. And my son used to ask me all these questions. Where did dinosaurs come from? Are there aliens? Are there this and that? And so we sat in Denny's for like hours as he was breaking it down for me and just talking about all this information. And I go, you know what? He just doesn't have a, 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 a know the Word, but he has a relationship with the Word. Mm -hmm. Like he studies the Word, not just on the surface, but he goes, deep and so with that that was very that was exciting for me and that was very attractive for me mm -hmm. yeah. okay i want to talk about chivalry okay and how pastor kelvin treats you because i've seen it mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful and we've had a conversation about that 
do you think chivalry is dead in you know the other generations <laughs> In the other generations, yeah, because they're living in a world about me. Mm. I want me time. Me, myself, and I. If it ain't good for me, then it ain't good for nobody. I think that in a marriage, it cannot survive because there's no me, it's us. Right. There's no mine, it's ours. There's mm. no me, I mean, we, me, and mine. Yeah, okay, whatever that is. But the thing is, it's all about, so for me, chivalry is just here. My, and I say this here, cliche I say my job is to make my wife happy. Okay. So how do you make her happy? Self-sacrifice. That means that I do the things that I know that makes her happy. And that's a vulnerability. See, most people will not work to the joy of they make because it makes them vulnerable. It makes them look like the, what they say suckers or a henpeck or weak. Or, no, that's, that's just the opposite. Yeah. You see, in the Bible, the that's book of Ephesians true. says that he defines, no, the book of Ephesians says that he commanded man to love his wife. Okay. As Christ loved the church. Yeah. Christ died for the church. So therefore he said, die to your wife. So that means yeah. let yourself go to her. And he commands the woman to, uh, no, he said love the wife. He said command the woman to submit to the husband. But he don't command her to submit to the fool. He said submit to the man that submitted to me. Mm -hmm. And people miss that because I'm not submitted to nobody. So therefore you gonna submit to me? No, that's a fight on the hand. Mm -hmm. So, but, it, but when the wife, we automatically return love for love, but we turn inconsistency and, and harshness with inconsistency and harshness. And that's where all the conflict come in marriage. See, my wife don't submit to me because she's a lesser vessel. She's not. She's equal to me and back stronger than me in many ways. Mm -hmm. But see, I can't do nothing without my help me. See, without her, I'm a half of a person. But she's got my blind sight. Like she said this way, I'm your ride and die. Mm -hmm. And I know that. If something happened, I know without a doubt, I don't have to look behind me. I know behind me. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't come without a cost. The cost is self sacrifice. So, Shivery, what is that? Yeah. To making sure she's okay. Yeah. You know, how you doing, baby? Give her a kiss. I know, I know her love languages. I do all the things that I know to make her happy. Do you know the reciprocal is that? She goes out of her way to make me happy. I don't ask for it, I don't demand it. She just does it automatically. God built her that way. He built me this way. Mm -hmm. So if I submit to him and he teaches me how to love my wife, then I know that I got a good marriage. And nothing can break it up because I know she's happy. And if she's not, I'll change it. Even if it costs me something, I'll make changes to make sure she's happy. But it's not based on selfishness or egotistic behavior. It's based upon work, God and his values. Mm -hmm. So she would never ask for me of something that she couldn't ask God for. She would never expect something of me that God wouldn't say is okay. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I won't see her doing or asking me to do something that's going to break God's moral code. Mm -hmm. So whatever she asks me, it's all good. So if I don't feel like it, then I got to go back to the word and say, hold on, now, wait, wait, wait. am I believing it or am I just placating? I say I believe it, mentally assenting, we call it. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. and, and that right there has really made our marriage the best. And I'm not saying we're perfect. We have issues. I get mad with her pretty often. Do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but I don't get mad with her in the area that that caused me to sin or hurt her. I get I, unless she do something that that's not. When I say that, when I say mad, maybe it may not be the word the word girl look at. But sometimes she don't live up to my expectation in some areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But is that a deal breaker? Absolutely not. These are some of the, that twenty percent that I count on. You know, but the eighty percent. All good. We're gonna we're gonna just work with that one. And then there's sometimes that <laughs> that I want to do some things and she don't want to do it, and that could be a deal break for many people. But you know what happens? I say well, it's not that important. Let's do it the way you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens? She goes to do what she and she says, "Yo, baby, we did this work. Let's do what you want to do." But if I fight for it, yeah, we dig into the sand. Yeah. We got an impasse going on. Yeah. But if I just you know it ain't breaking God's law. It ain't going to uh, put us in bankruptcy. It ain't going to destroy the family. Okay, let's do it. It's not going to hurt nothing. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, well, a lot of times I find out, her way was better than mine. Yeah. But if I was never willing to submit to that shit, then I would never see that. Mm -hmm. she, if she's my helpmate, and the, like I said, it's not she's side by side. In fact, when God made woman, he didn't take him out of the back. He took him out of his side. 
So we walk side to side together. Mm -hmm. We equal in our marriage. Yeah. Now there's in every organization there is a head. Okay, but it doesn't mean that I'm authoritatively dictating what goes on. The head is often the bottom, bottom holding everything together. So my responsibility would be the last man standing, holding the whole family together, supporting everybody in the family, no matter what the cost is. And that's where my, my wife, she's up here. God's up there, but she's up here. And I take care of everything else, best of my ability. Mm -hmm. wow. So when you ask about sugar, is it dead? I think it's waning. And I think it coincides with the statistics that you talked about based upon what um, Pastor Kelvin just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. That is something that's learned. It's something that we have to want to, that men, because usually when we talk about chivalry, it's, it's the man doing the little things for the women from uh, lifting them up to opening the doors, to caring for them, to just making sure that they're okay. And I think it, it just really coincides with the statistics that you talked about because it's, it's um, founded in the flesh whether I'm going to die to myself or I'm going to care more about my spouse. Mm -hmm. So it's it's intentional. I don't think that it has to die. I think it's those people who are vulnerable to say, yes, I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to be around. I want to learn how to love you. And I think once you learn how to love somebody and you're committed to loving them, then that chivalry would just, it will remain. Right. But what happens is that when we're born into broken homes, no good role models around, no one mentoring or teaching you. You don't have no value. So what do you get your values from? TV, rap videos. Mm -hmm. So what you emulate, what you pay attention to the most, what you focus the most, you become. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you if you are absorbing yourself into videos and in this this way they present themselves through media, they are actually programming your mind on how you process your relationships. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a healthy environment, healthy men, yeah. they're healthy people that's around you, then chances are you're gonna make some bad decisions in your life. Mm -hmm. I think every young person should have a mentor. Not just a mentor, they gotta be in line with your, yourself. Now, I'm a godly man. I think that if you're a godly woman or a man, you should have a godly mentor. Right. Because if you get mentored by the wrong person, they'll tell you all the wrong things and it goes exactly against your values. So you start questioning the things that you value the most. And they can't be confused. I, I think as women, uh, as we're fighting for our rights to be heard, to be seen, to be uh, equal, equal rights, equal voice, equal all of that, right? There was something that was that was missing. And I think that there's a society, part of society that says, okay, you want to be equal? You know, sometimes you go to open the door or a man goes to open the door for you and, and the woman is like, I can open the door for myself. Yep. I don't need you. Yep. I did, did, did. And I think we're losing. So was it that you couldn't? We know you can. Maybe that they wanted to, that they got the opportunity to. Yeah. So it's all about the perspective. So to make you feel special. To make you feel special. Why? I like feeling special. Yes. And, and I'll tell you this here, as a young woman, if a man don't treat you special, you're dating the wrong person. Yep. Don't accept nothing less than, you should know already what's your non-negotiables. You should know already what you will accept and will not accept. Yeah. But if you start sleeping with him first, you're going to start accepting a whole bunch of things you wouldn't accept ever be yeah. before. Mm. So, tacity is alive and well in God's house. Can you repeat what you said about as a young woman? Just, yeah. I want, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So chastity is blind and well in God's house. So if, if you start to, your relationship and you're involved with sex, you will compromise your values, you will compromise your non-negotiables, and you will stay a lot longer than you ever should have stayed with anybody that's not treating you right. Mm -hmm. So you want to be treated like a queen that you are. Mm -hmm. You're valued. God loves you. Mm -hmm. He cares for you. He wants nothing yeah. but the best for you. And he has the perfect man for you. But the first thing I would say is that you must know thyself before God can let you know who's praying for a woman just like you. Because he's not going to send you to a man that's ready for a wife if you're not ready for him. Because that will be punishing him for something he's doing right. Yeah. So get yourself right. Allow God to be the leader of your life. Do not follow the world because today the old wrong is the new right. Mm -hmm. And the new right is the old wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. I say to you, oh, we should we should date, but we shouldn't have sex. The world said that's crazy, counter counterintuitive. Yeah. I said that we should we should go out and have fun, but not get drunk. 
He said, well, no, man, I like to get drunk. Yeah. No, you know, all the things that, that will keep society moving in an even direction is being challenged by media and society. This is a, see, people don't know the devil is the God of this world. His whole goal is to sabotage God's plan for mankind. Mm -hmm. And we have fell to the fell to the lies of the enemy to where it's becoming to be our reality and it's challenging the very essence of who God is. And there will be a recompense for it one right. day. Thank you so much, Pastors Kelvin and Cheryl. I think this is a great place to just wrap it up and um, just bring it on in. I really, really appreciate this chat. It was a, a legit chat, and I'm sure we got a lot of good nuggets and values and things that we can just live our lives with. So thank you so much. But I want to play a little game with you guys. Okay. okay. Uh, so I know okay. that you've traveled a lot. So yes. where is one place, like your favorite place that you went to and why? Mm. For me, it was Rome. Oh, why? It, you know, I had the best time. It was, I got a chance to spend time with not only my husband, but we also went with another couple, my brother-in-law and his wife, and just the people, the ambiance doing something special, going on the other side of the world. Mm. Um, it, it was it was, it was was that moment, it was everything. It was love, it was romantic, and we traveled from one end of the country to the other end, and it was just really exciting. Yeah, we spent the whole month over there. Wow, a month. We got a car, just drove across the Stayed in a villa, oh, closed really? the restaurant oh, down. Man, it, was, you know. it was the best, and I would say the same thing. Okay. That was my best. That was your best too. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. just, we traveled, we went to Rome, went to uh, France, Florence, went Pizza. to, yeah, went to the, we went to the Vatican. Yeah. We're not going to do it, talking to the Pope, he wasn't there. <laughs> Climbed the hundred million stairs. <laughs> hey, where's up, John Paul? So uh, that was home. But oh, no, we, okay. we, that, Rome was the best place that okay. we uh, went to. It was really good. We got to connect and we got this chance to, you know, a lot of times we will visit, but it's always a business type visit and we do some things while we're there. But this was more just an R&R. &R. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we put together our plan for, uh, you know, as life goes on, to where as the kids are grown now, we're just going to just be traveling the world, just spending a month here, a month there, a month there, and just until God calls us on. We're going to I love travel. it. I love it. So, beaches or mountains? Beaches. 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 And this holiday, what is one thing you guys are committing to? What is a tra tradition that is is involved in like your marriage you guys do for the holidays? Family. Okay. Being with the grandkids. Yep. You see, we have 10 grandkids. Well, mm -hmm. nine and plus one, right? Yeah. And and so we... Uh, one is a great grand. Oh, one that's a great one. Grand. Wow. Yeah. So okay. we, we love spending time with the grandkids. Yeah. So we look forward to the holidays and getting together with our kids because most of them are spread out. One is here, and then the other three are spread out all over the country. So we look forward to the holidays for the grandkids Where everybody comes and the kids. Spends the night cooking singing, laughing, dancing, playing games. I love it. And, and being empty dusters, we just we just roll. The, whatever we do, whatever we want to do. So that's, yeah. that's a good thing. That's great. Thank you guys so much. Thank really, you very really much. appreciate this chat. Thank you. Thank well, you so much. We appreciate you taking the time to yeah. visit us and just have the opportunity to speak. Yeah, and it's been fun already. Like behind the scenes, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun already. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Bye, guys. Remember, yeah. bye, you guys. keep yourself to yourself. It's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs>